What's up guys? This is the Rifeman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as Great Britain. And in the last episode we ended on the Siege of Martinique. And uh, so, last episode I hit end turn and this happened during the end turn phase and it meant that I couldn't actually uh, continue the siege and save the game. So I had to go back and I'm fighting this now at the end of that turn. So just before I clicked end turn, I'm fighting it then so I could save it because I wasn't going to record the next episode directly afterwards. Yeah, but let's go clear out the French because ultimately it's just a list. It's just an army of militia, buccaneers, and native troops against a pretty elite, solid British army. So let's take them out. And then at some point we are going to have to uh, figure out where we're going to send these armies. And I think, well, I could land and take India, but at the same time, the thirteen colonies beckon. Because uh, we are no longer allies, because I betrayed them in the past. And they are actually building troops to sit near my borders. So when we eventually declare war on them, they are going to have quite a lot of uh, initiative. So here comes all of our troops, including the Fusilier Regiment von Losberg. So these expatriate troops, or these expat troops, are going to be the core of our right flank. Then our British regulars are going to take up the left. Let's divvy up the cavalry, including the general on both flanks. Each uh, section is going to have a pike unit supporting them. And the rangers are going to be out on the flank as well. But we are going to be pushing. Because fundamentally we are... Su significantly superior to the f enemy forces arrayed against us. So rather than wait for them to come to us, we are going to go to them. So it looks like the first action is going to be... Well, the AI has, developed, has, has deployed in a bit of a strange position, really. They normally deploy all together, but they've actually deployed in three distinct clusters all the better to be destroyed piecemeal so you men are going to advance to the edge of the tree line at speed you need to be careful with the cavalry on this flank because there are defences ok so you men advance advance and give fire because we know they can't they're not in position to stop us and our cavalry is in a great position to destroy them when their morale finally gives out so let my artillery fire at whoever it wants because ultimately it's only one gun Okay, it's West India. Oh, it's West India Company Infantry. My mistake. Let's push up. So my cavalry is going to is going to storm in. My infantry is going to push up. My rangers are going to go around the flank to try and maybe head off some of these buccaneer reinforcements. Those buccaneers are shattered. Keep charging on into the militia. The right flank is going a very similar way. Charge my regiment of horse in against those buccaneers. There we go. My cavalry charge has. Okay, right. Sound the withdrawal. These four units take up a new position, advance up to those cavalry defences. You might be saying, why have I withdrawn my cavalry? When things get messy, it's easy to just get your cavalry out of there and let things... Let things stabilise a bit. Especially when you've got troops firing on um, cavalry combats. Does this cavalry go and set the general's bodyguard? Okay, there we go. Now things are getting a bit clearer. We can see what units are and aren't fleeing. I can then continue to deploy my cavalry. 
These men are going to line... I'm going to angle themselves a bit better. You guys hit that unit of militia because they haven't lost many men. You men are going to continue to chase down your buccaneers. These guys can pivot and shoot the militia. I mean, ultimately, this, this was an army that was never going to stand that resolutely um, in the face of enemy fire anyway. break one unit off to go and support the general. These two units continue to envelop. Well, not to support the general, to support my guys attacking the general. Nope. General's bodyguard has been annihilated, so let's continue the infantry push. All this cavalry hit that unit of buccaneers. Okay, the cavalry... Let's just sound the recall. You men advance aggressively. It always feels like what the thing to do is to advance and take position wherever possible. I send out some of our cavalry around on a flanking run, ready to get to try and hit this defensive position to the rear. Let's target my artillery against that militia. No, there's only seven buccaneers, there's no point trying to take them out. This is this is a city battle. Well, let's actually pivot something more like something like this. Because fundamentally, the entire situation is 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 emerging a lot quicker than my armies could actually um, deploy, because we're putting out so much fire, and the enemy has. Such poor morale. Am I even pushing my cavalry up to threaten the flank? Okay, so let's get you guys to start pushing through the town. So you guys pivot there. These units represent the front line advancing up to that bastion. Although it looks like the enemy have just been, been they've been smashed, utterly smashed. So I could send my cavalry to charge down some of these guys, but I'm not. I'm not worried. It's having this dug-in infantry that's a concern. Uh, my cavalry is weak, and they are... I mean, those guys aren't tired, but are these guys tired? They're tired. So right now, the the name of the game is to continue to attack. Let's focus the guns onto them, because they are in a bit of an awkward position. Let's run our rangers up to try and take some pot shots. You men can run up and form a welcoming committee. So my rangers are going to run up and try to shoot them in the back. Nope, they've routed. Good stuff. Yeah, let all those scallywags route. Get my get my rangers into the house. New men who are walking up into this position can actually run and bring the fight to the enemy. My cavalry continue to push around to the rear. I mean, not very efficient. Be able to spread our casualties load out. No, avoid, avoid the native militia, militia um, emplacement. Avoid. No, 
important. Tank that militia unit if you want to kill something. Actually, no, just stay out of the way. The infantry is coming. So from their walls, they can just see red coats everywhere. Blue coats. What a terrible environment. Third Regiment, 33rd. But you can see they're slightly different to the regular line infantry because they don't have um, cross belts. But yes, now we witness the slaughter. Because there go the militia. And here go the African musketeers. They will not be here long. <laughs> there they go, and a few puffs of smoke from the rangers inside the farmhouse. Let's end the battle there, because it can be a bit... Be a bit mean. There we go. Slaughtered to a man or taken prisoner. And what this did mean, actually, is because I meant I could actually... Well, I looked and I was like, oh, I could also attack Nassau. So I figured, why not also do that? Because then that's two uh, colonial possessions. One retaken um, for our troops or for our empire and another captured from an enemy. So I think it might be good to, to uh, attack the 13 colonies. In which case the army that's been sat near the Pueblo Nations all this time may actually be recalled to fight against our former colony. Because now we are becoming the master. So let's get our Hessian line infantry plus our last unit of actual infantry. They're going to push the flank. And you guys can have the buccaneers because they're a bit nimbler. Pikes in the centre. All of our cavalry is going to be on this flank. Which means I might put my pikes on the right flank. Cavalry in the centre. Very well. You want us to march into the town, eh? I've got the Bargier Lancers on the right flank, but this is why I've got pikemen. They will love to meet you. And Buccaneers, obviously Buccaneers aren't great melee infantry. Like they've got, they get a bigger charge bonus than pikemen, but their melee, melee attack, defence and morale is worse. Defence, significantly so. And they do have range, range attacks, but because they have pistols. Not because of any sort of ranged, actual range capability. So they may launch a spoiling attack with their lances, but if they do, my pikemen will meet them. Pindari horsemen. The landless rabble. To be honest, it looks like they might even be falling back out of the town. But I want these guys to f push up through the town. And I need... Well, to be honest, I might make these guys run. As far as they, as far as it is to run. Because while these guys are advancing, I want to be sweeping in from the left flank. So I might even give you guys more explicit orders. You take position inside that building, the 7th Regiment. Go there. The 6th Regiment, secure here. 2nd Regiment, secure there. The 90th, secure that space. Very well, it means I have two regiments around the flank to support my uh, pikemen. It looks like my gunners... Oh, they aren't even unlimbered. They're not going to have a massive effect. They're going to have to shoot their way through the town. But it's not a pr massive problem. Might actually make 
these guys that are further on the left run to maintain the pace of the advance of the flanking units. Okay, I might have to make all of them run now because they are making their intentions known. They are trying to retake, re-establish themselves inside the town, so I don't want them to have that. Just so now these units out on the flank, you need to make some good pace up toward the enemy. There is a bit of a, a bit of a clash there between my flanking units and my units pushing up the front. Okay, you guys form up here. You guys form up at this junction here and be ready to form square. And our horseman is getting ready. So we have camels coming in. So the seventh can engage them at point blank range. Oh, too bad about the sound. You men run, you guys form into square. Let's charge my pikes in. Form square, you form square as well. Okay, the enemies are... Commit the cavalry in. Let's get you guys in as well. So buccaneers aren't the most useful, but at least in this instance here, the 93rd can actually chase off the camel nomads while also providing some musket support to these poor chaps fighting the uh, fighting the um, cavalry. Bring you guys around the flank. You guys push up to hit the Ducky, Ducky Alarm Peasantry. Those guys have got smashed. You guys form square. Okay, there we go. So we are making some progress. Can you go... Okay, right. Buccaneers fight the camel nomads. You men form square. You men form line to fire into the rear of the camels. Not the camels, the elephants. You men bayonet charge the side of the peasantry. You guys bayonet charge the side of this landless rabble. That infantry did not like being charged by lancers and can't say I blame it. Who's this coming in? African Musketeers charging in. The square is holding to a degree. This cavalry around to fight the infantry mercenaries. There we go. Knock out some more of the, the armed peasantry and charge on into the firelock armed populace. go. Some men line up to engage the cavalry fighting in square. Some of you push into more of the town to the rear. Okay, right. Now you guys get in, get in, get in. You guys are pouring fire in, pouring vo volleys in, but now they're going to burn it, charge the African volunteers. My buccaneers are going to run through the square, hoping to lure the camels in. I could occupy this building, but that's a bad idea, I think. Okay, 
for you guys line up to also face off the Bajir Lancers. Because they are Lancers, once they've once they've charged, their capability to do damage drops off quite dramatically. Okay, but you guys now. The 7th Regiment, just hold. Let's run another unit around to try and help soul, uh, help um, shore up that flank. Let's get cavalry to chase down that landless rabble. So don't like the fact that they, they were routing but then decided to come back. Charge some men out of the town to make sure that any units that do come back are cut, are cut off. Bring our general up. Bajir Lancers. Uh, oh, these are Pindari Horsemen, my mistake. Can you get you guys out of the way? Okay, so an African Musketeer unit. Where, are he where on earth have these guys gone then? Chase down the African Musketeers. Let's get this Yeomanry unit over here as well to deal with them. Ah, there we go. They're about to get charged by a landless rabble anyway. No Yeomanry. Go chase down those silly sausages. There we go. So now the 93rd is engaging the General's bodyguard with volley fire, and he did manage to kill the General. There we go, I think. That is the lot. Oh no, there's a Camel Nomad unit. Quick, fire at them with cannon shot. Good. <laughs> that was enough to, uh, to ward them off. Pretty sure that is a complete victory. So both these armies cannot be replenished because I have not got the funds. But still, these are two, two territories that now belong to us. And I've got a bunch of fourth rates, and your navy is a bunch of fifths. So I'm not going to punt them out just yet. Okay, New Haven, you think you're doing short and carbines? I think instead you're going to do steam pump land drainage, I suppose. Well, no, I may as well get short on carbines. It's going to need to be researched sooner or later. It's not a pressing demand. And obviously, we've built our strength up in Lisbon. We're ready to fight Arturo Cruz. And then at some point, we will have to fight this just a giant battle here, which will be pretty interesting. Let's hit N10. And we've still got Moscow and Petrovskaya under siege. So I'm curious to see how they interfere with my plans. Yeah, I should have just cancelled all those buildings being built. Don't worry, I'm waiting for the inevitable Prussian betrayal or the Ottoman betrayal. But I really, really would like to take out um, Spain before they do that. I mean, it's the Ottomans that will cause me the most grief because I've got um, borders in Eastern Europe and in North Africa. They're sat there waiting for a chance to attack. Again, you've broken with tented farms. What's the point? Let's get Cameron Napier to march out and attack this small this Russian stack there. Push them back towards the to the uh, Ottomans and make them their problem. Big, big, big damage. New towns emerged. Monterey in New Spain. Let's get a craft workshop. And Otimik, or whatever that is, in Cherokee territory. Sweet. Um, let's upgrade. You to a commercial base and not you to a port. Big port just yet. Let's get some militia to occupy here. You get a trade port. Is that a new port? Yeah, that's one of them. And I do see those grenadiers. They also need use somewhere. OK, 
Okay, let's build another trade port and let's build a, a light galley to occupy that. Let's rebuild this dockyard. Upgrade the drill school, upgrade the cannon foundry, upgrade the roads. Let's do some economic investing in Europe because I never normally do it. Well, I never normally upgrade where I could be potentially attacked from. So Konigsberg is pretty Protestant now, soon to be entirely Protestant. Also got some raids at some farmlands, and that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Ready for you're still replenishing, and you're, you're going to push against the Spanish at some point. Don't move in case they go north of the river. Let's combine sloops. Let's get them into Porto. Actually, let's get one sloop. Up and over to Bilbao. There's another stack of Spanish troops. Okay, so let's get some... Okay, get two units of conventional artillery, because you haven't got any proper artillery. And let's get some... You've got one unit of Hessian Jaeger. Can you get another unit of Hessian Jaeger? You can. So two more guns and a light and a um, light infantry unit. That's pretty good. So let's quickly hop back over to the Americas to make sure we do our investing here. Rebuild the governor's residence. Let's build metal of roads because why not? We've got cash on the hip. Upgrade Martinique's roads, upgrade the governor's mansion, replenish our army, rebuild the port, which we broke, and let's do a bit of economy of investing there. Good, we've got a bit of cash left over, but that cash is probably going to be needed when we attack um, this force here at Evora with Horace Davison, or, or, or a combination. So let's take these three militia, get them into Lisbon. So let's take... So what? Yes, you're missing artillery, so we're going to steal two. Can't do that, General. You can take... A unit of light infantry and two other infantry units. Let's take two Swiss grenadiers over to Horace Davison, and we can go hit the Spanish here at Evora, because we will need to push Madrid. To be honest, Lisbon just needs to keep cranking out troops. Just keep cranking them out, or we can keep attacking, and they can't keep up this rate of um, attrition for too long. If we keep knocking back army after army after army after army, eventually they will have to acquiesce. So my gunners... Are going to position themselves up on this ridge line, and for that they will get a a line infantry and a skirmisher contingent to cover them. But our main offensive punch is going to be a whole bucket load of elite and special troops. You've got all my Highlanders, you've got Swiss Grenadiers, we've got Marines, units that are just waiting to storm forward. Including a Hessian Jaeger unit. So let's stop what we're doing and have a look at them. First light foot Hessian Jaegers. So they've got blue coats, unlike the red in the thumbnail. But still, they're pretty good. Good range. So compare them to a... So they shoot. So like a, a Scottish Line Infantry isn't bad. Actually, let's use Marines. We know Marines are good. But they have more a baseline... First light foot Hessian Jaeger unit has one more accuracy than the experience for Marine. Granted, Marines re reload a lot faster and have and uh, don't have more ammunition, but they reload a lot faster because these guys are meant to be having equipped with rifles which were slower to reload. Here's Horace himself. So, first order of business: gunners. Get up on the hill. Infantry run into position. My light infantry are going to skirt 
behind the line to get into position so they don't lure their cavalry into the attack. But what I want to do, I think... Okay, so this is a feature we can't get around. Okay, right, I might actually want to do something like this. So these guys are going to be okay where they are for now, just to cover my guns getting into position. But we do quite an aggressive advance. I'm not entirely happy with my light infantry here, because they could be at risk from those hussars pushing around the flank. But once my guns are up in position, they're really going to be in dire straits. And this is really bad if they shoot at my artillery. Because uh, it takes nothing to destroy a gun team. Nothing. So they could theoretically take out two, two or three gun teams at a time like this. They're not charging, but they are looking. So I want to move my Hessian Jaegers up and deploy stakes. You deploy square, let's halt the fire at will. Okay, let's re engage the fire at will. Okay, let's take these units, push them around because they can flank the Spanish entirely there. Cavalry's pushing up. See you guys. Halt. It's probably already too late to deploy stakes. I've got nothing there to cover you except for my general. So all I can do is take a unit of Swiss Grenadiers. No, oh, no. I did it just too soon. Yeah, the Hessian Jaegers are going to get cut down. And they're not going to escape in time. But that's okay, my plan does not depend on the Hessian Jaegers. So you meant fire at will. Re-engaged. Gunners up on the hill. Charge them, Swiss Grenadiers. So let's pivot this unit of Grenadiers. Okay, you guys form square. I can position my Rofman up on the hill, because now the Swiss Grenadiers are attacking their cavalry. On the right flank, this lone unit of infantry. Okay, now all my guns have opened up. Good stuff. So now these Hessian Jaegers can support this Swiss Grenadier unit with accurate rifle fire while these guys clear out the Hussars. So you men that were getting the bejesus hacked out of you can go pew pew. Hey, they actually fired proper gun noises. Okay, so let's take these units and advance them up onto the hill on this side of that building. These men can push up around the right hand side of that building and catch a whole bunch of their troops clustered together and unable to maximise their firepower. There we go. So if I unlim uh, get these guys out of square and drop the square back, my riflemen can actually provide charge these guys with my general as well just to make sure they don't get away but there we go they can now provide fire against the actual line infantry elements so let's divvy my gun teams up into pairs so these two units and these two units so my left hand team focus on that big blob of troops in the center you guys focus on hammering the guys, hammering these guys on the left. Let's 
are engaging them in point-blank musket fire. These guys are just about able to be engaged. Just. But they're going to get cut to ribbons, as is that colonial infantry unit. Great stuff. So they've been shattered. Let's pivot. These guys up. Let's bring up Rogers Rangers. Swiss line infantry is looking a bit vulnerable. And it's their Swiss line. But the fifth, like I said, getting, they're getting sniped out from my skirmishers atop the hill. And the eighth grenadiers are back. Are back in the line. I've got some guys left to reload. Ooh, gorillas. Let's get my general over onto this flank. So they can help provide some protection. There's a unit of company de Gatere shotgunners. Those aren't shotguns. But what is going to happen is that those guys are going to get infantry shooting at them. Okay, so those guys should be enough to deal with those loose loose units on the flank. These two units can go in filling the gaps here. Big enemy break on the left flank. So you men take this hill. You men push up. Got our guns to engage the first regiment. They're still kicking. Let's get the second unit to hit the second grenadier regiment. These two units should quick, relatively quickly cause the guerrillas to break. Because I do want the general over here pretty rapidly. Let's let these guys fire on the irregulars. Okay, well actually I may as well get you guys to pivot to engage this this section of this uh, position of infantry that looks like looks like it's forming here. Skirmishers to continue to push the left flank. There we go, my Highlanders are in position, ready to engage the 32nd. Good stuff. It will not be long till they flee the field. There they go. This flank collects another unit and keeps pushing. There we go, General. Which fortunately wasn't getting shot by the Irregulars. Both my gunners focus on this cluster of units down here. Everyone else can be dealt with. You men push up to the building. You men advance. Okay, that unit is formed square against various threats. Just, let's just use my Hessian Jaeger to pick at them. Maybe even pivot one unit of Grandiers back. There we go. Let's keep picking them off. Hmm. Those men are definitely redefining the assault gun. There they go. So the Grenadier Regiment has joined the action. Looking rather lovely. Picking off the men of the 17th. Let's get some of our gunners to focus on them. I like commanding them in pairs when they're like this because it means that wh whichever, whatever target I choose, they do actually provide a good amount of firepower rather than targeting one gun per thing. I'm actually 
deploying them in pairs means whatever you're aiming at is getting a good amount of firepower. Go hit those shotgunners. So those units are routed. Let's advance my rangers up to begin to continue to engage the first. And let's actually provide a bit more of a stable front against them because we can now pivot our forces. So my general is going to attack this unit of shotgunners. There's only 42 left of them and they are a... Well, they're a regiment of foot unit that only gets 105 men. Come on, route. Good. Okay, but beyond the first regiment... Their army is defeated in the field, so focus fire them with my artillery up on the hill all the way back there. Still hammering shots home. Even the first light foot, who I thought might not live to see the end of this battle. But they have, thanks to the actions of the 8th, who have suffered. They've got 100, 100 casualties, 101 casualties. Tis well, George Washington. Well, clearly it wasn't. <laughs> you traitorous rebel. Oh, just kidding. No, I like George Washington. He used to be one of our guys fighting against the French. Well, I say our guys loosely, not claiming he's British. That'd be Your pretty majesty. dumb. But let's get our spy into Madrid. Okay, so there's 1300. Again, they're still trying to sabotage our farms, but that's okay. I'll just build better farms. Okay, lots of Spanish troops. I need to be wary of them as well, because I own St. Petersburg and that will probably upset them. Let's rebuild the farm. Settlement besieged. So, Hector Norton, how are you doing? Found the call to battle. I mean, yeah I, yeah, I could probably attack that, but my armies are a bit weak. No, it's the kind of fight I could probably fight, but I think it would be safer to let sleeping dogs lie and let my armies get a bit more replenished. I have nothing to lose from waiting. My agent in Moscow has been killed, which is unfortunate because I would like some more visibility on what's going on here in Finland. Let's hit enter and see how the AI responds to what I've been up to. Spain is the the big question. Ah, oh, the, the leftovers have retreated back to the. Uh, ooh, actually, that's. They are sending in some good numbers of troops, but if I keep knocking them back every time, there's only so much they can do. That's right, Ottomans. Go kill that last remaining Russian stack for me. Waste all your time. <laughs> Russia carefully navigating the territories that are left open to it. Hey, the Petrovskaya garrison are coming to attack us. And that's, that's pretty good. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for the destruction of the Petrovskaya garrison. Cheers, everyone.